Thanks for coming to have a look at this Pramix Discovery demo. My name is Ian and I work with the software development team here at Pramix Microsimulation. Today I'm going to show you how you can use the matrix estimation feature in Pramix Discovery to help you to refine and improve the demands for your model. For this quick demo, I'm using Pramix Discovery version 14 and one of our training networks, which you can see here on the screen in front of you. Now, as I'll assume you understand, matrix estimation is a balancing act between three inputs in order to get out a new and improved estimated set of demands. As illustrated by this diagram, the inputs you will rely on are a set of survey targets that you want your assignment to better match to, a best guess at the correct traffic distribution in the form of a prime matrix, and a network described by routing information collected from your model. So let's begin by collecting the routing information we will need. Like all other outputs, you can choose what types to collect and change um, the settings for these using the outputs configuration dialog. The outputs we need for matrix estimation are controlled in a group called matrix estimation routing. You can choose to collect a matrix feature, which I'm going to do here by toggling on the checkbox. I'm also going to reduce the sample interval for this type of output down to two minutes which in this model matches the feedback interval I have set. You can also choose to collect origin and destination trip routing information based on flows in the network from a simulation run. Now a really nice way to be more efficient when you collect these files is to include a filter to limit the sampled and collected data to only links or turns that you have data for. Doing this by picking a survey file here greatly reduces the time to collect and the time to process these routing files. When you've done all that, you need to save your model and then you can simulate to collect outputs. You can see here as the model is running that the matrix PJ data is being sampled every two minutes. Let's speed things up a bit uh, for just now. Then, as we get to the end, you can see that it writes out the files you have asked for. In this case, both the matrix PJ output and the origin destination trips output are provided. Now, just like the other outputs, these go into a run folder in a log folder, which is next to your model file. You can see in this folder, three OD trips files, one collected every hour, and one matrix uh, PJ CSV file, which was written at 10 a.m. at the end of the simulation. For this demo, I've already prepared the other inputs, so we can now go back to Pramix Discovery to run the matrix estimation process. From the Edit Demand tab then, you can open up the matrix estimation dialog. Let's uh, take a look at this dialog firstly. It is broken into three parts. The top section where you locate the inputs. You can set the iteration controls in the middle section and then press Go and watch your progress at the bottom. As I said, I have all the input files ready for this example. I can pick my prior, then I can pick my survey data, and finally the routing snapshot, which we created a moment ago and is in our log folder. At that stage, I could start my matrix estimation process. I've provided the three required inputs and the run matrix estimation button is now active. But in this example, I'm also going to include some constraints. Before going on, let's have a look at what these files look like. Firstly, the prime matrix is a CSV, and this is the same format you have for the import of demands to Pyramix Discovery. The constraints is also a CSV, which specifies a minimum and maximum value for an origin or destination total or a particular origin destination movement, which is the type shown here. And lastly, the survey file, which is another CSV, and you can see includes info for links and turns. Now, if you want some help generating the survey file, you can create a template. This allows you to create an empty CSV based on the turns and links in your network that you can then populate with your own data. With all the inputs specified, we can then go on and set the iteration controls. I'm going to set a max GH of 7 and require that 99% of my turn and link comparisons satisfy this criterion before the process stops. Otherwise, I'll let the process run for at most 10 iterations. Lastly, 
I want to run this process for matrix one, which is what is already chosen. Then I can hit run. Now this is a small model, which runs very quickly, and you can see it has stopped after six iterations. Now when you run the ME process, outputs are automatically created in a demand folder next to your model. This contains a timestamped estimation folder, which contains your outputs, including the estimated demand CSV. Like your prior CSV, this is in the format that can be easily imported back into Frank Discovery. One of the other files you get is a matrix of differences, which you can see here. Now I've shaded this up using Excel's conditional formatting rules to quickly see the biggest increases or decreases from the prior. So let's import this back into your model. It's as easy as that because the output is already in the correct format. Then all you have to do is switch to the Visualize tab and hit Refresh and you can start your model running. And that really is it. Now, if this was a real project, I'd want to go back, do multiple runs to check the assignment or re-estimate demands depending on the changes that the matrix estimation process had made to my matrix. That's all for now, but if you're ready to give Parameters Discovery a shot, come to our website now to download a trial and see for yourself how easy it is to use. Thanks for watching.